Hi everyone, welcome to my April bullet journal setup. Glad to have you here. My name is Kanis and Studio Kara is my world of creation. I imagine, I create and I hope to inspire you along the way. If you want to follow me in my journey, feel free to subscribe and for the ones who already did, thank you for being a part of this family. I hope you're all doing well. For this month's setup, I tried to do a theme that you guys can easily make yourself. It might look intimidating, but I promise it's very simple. I went back to black and white, leaving out any type of color aside from the brown craft paper. This month's theme is minimal, simple, abstract mountains. I know, it's a mouthful. I'll be drawing tons of these, so by the end of it you won't see straight because all of the repeated lines. It's a fair warning ahead. Here's my little handmade feather bookmark. You can get it in my Etsy shop if you're interested. The link is in the description or in the info icon. Let's get started with a flip through of the previous month setup, which is March. As I was filming this, I hadn't realized that the camera wasn't focused until I was editing. I really should get an autofocus camera. But I filmed this bit again in the end so you guys can see how I filled up the previous setups. You can get free printables of this and all previous monthly setups, as well as the mini drawing tutorial of the abstract monstera leaf. Blank versions are available in my Etsy shop, all the info is in the description. I pointed out the mistakes I made in one of the weeks, but all of them are corrected in the printable so don't worry. The last week is empty because I was filming this before that, and there is a peek into April. But before we get into that, I made a little, let's say, a cheat sheet in which I drew out the abstract mountains on different paper with different kinds of pens, just to see how they would turn out and so that I could easily choose which design to use on which spread. I used a sheet out of my journal and craft paper to draw the mountains in black and white. I also drew a completely black circle with ink to see how the white would look on it. They all turned out amazing. You will see that I used all of the designs throughout the whole setup. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. I recently got the Sakura Pigma Micron fine liners to try them out. So far I've used Stedler fine liners. I will mainly use these throughout this whole setup with the different nibs, which are perfect for drawing these abstract mountains. Other pens and tools I used are a white gel pen and an ink brush pen. By the way, that craft paper circle with the white lines I showed you before is sort of an alternative for you to try out if you think these mountains might be too tricky to start with. And as you can see the footage is still blurry but don't worry it will focus soon. I started out with the writing prompt for this month, in which he is a mountain of ice and she is the lake that lies beneath. The one offers their life to the other, so he can see her live, and she weeps knowing that he will inevitably cease to exist. I tried to write one of these for every month and I thought this one from my collection fit perfectly with this month's theme. For the ones who missed it, these are writing prompts that look like poems. I write a few lines that in a way captures a whole storyline in a few sentences. Take them however you like, poems, prompts, metaphors. If you are interested and are inspired to write a piece based on this, I know I say this every time but please share it with me, I would love to read it. I have added a little timer in the corner so you can see when the footage is back to good focus. Feel free to skip to this part or you can keep watching to see what the process is that I go through. I have started drawing the mountains at this point, don't worry I will be drawing these a few hundred more times for you to see how I do it. Beneath the mountains I drew a little triangle as sort of a reflection of the above part. I inked this one completely black. And there we go, we're back in focus. You can briefly see how the mountains on the left page turned out as I continue with the right side page, which will be a Dutch door. I started off with outlining the area I wanted to fill with the mountain pattern and then I started at the bottom. I started with a small triangle that I fill in and then I outline that triangle with parallel lines. Basically I keep adding lines to the original triangle with a little space in between. 
Depending on what size pen nib you use, the smaller the nib, the more detailed the drawing will end up. I think here I used a 0.5 nib while on the previous page it was a 0.3 nib. The more lines you add to the triangle, the more you will get the hang of it. And trust me, by the end of it, you will be drawing straight lines freehand with no effort. Unless you're like me and you still can do it. Anyway, it's really okay if the lines are not straight. I tried to refrain from using a ruler here because the mountains end up looking much nicer without. The tips of the triangle triangles are a little free to roam left or right. I don't know if you can see it, but I had a sketch with pencil underneath, but I completely went against it at some parts. The beauty here is that the more you improvise, the better it turns out. There is no right or wrong here. So no need for rulers or pencil sketches. You can just start with a general outline and keep drawing those lines until a masterpiece appears. Leave a comment and let me know if you'll try this out yourself. And if you're lazy like me, that's okay. You can get free printables of this whole setup and all previous monthly setups linked in the description. And remember that blank versions are also available in my Etsy shop. Here I went back to the black triangle on the left page and grabbed my white gel pen to draw on this bit. This might be my favorite design. I just love how this turned out with the white mountains against the black background. Again I start with a little filled in triangle and keep adding lines until I think it's enough. I always make the mountains in the front a little bit bigger and higher if you will and the ones that appear behind it they get smaller and smaller as they are farther away. Way. It creates an illusion of depth and perspective. I decided not to completely fill the black with the lines and left a bit empty on the top which looks like the night sky in a sense. Only the moon is missing here. Let's imagine there is a moon that lights up the mountains here. Another important aspect of the mountain drawings is a little line that connects every other tip of the triangles. I don't know how else to explain, you can see what I mean here. It creates more depth and makes the drawing look like it went from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. It turns it into an optical illusion as if the mountains are coming out of the page. It also slightly makes the mountains look like pyramids in a sense. Do you see it? Leave a comment and let me know. You might have noticed I forgot to do this in the mountain above and you will see how much better it looks with the tiny lines added. It doesn't matter where you start adding the lines but just make sure you do it for every other space in between the triangle tips. Here I am going back to the Dutch door and I will speed through this because I just keep doing the same thing on repeat. Feel free to skip ahead at any time of this video because it's mostly repetitive when it comes to drawing the mountains. But keep watching if you want to see the process. Also because it's strangely satisfying to watch, right? All the lines. The top part of the page I wanted to keep empty like the black triangle on the left page. I used my brush pen to black out the top part to make it look like the mountains are standing in the night sky.
I added the lines in between every other triangle tip here and you can see how much of a difference it makes. What do you think? Do they look better with the connecting lines or without? Leave a comment and let me know. Of course, you can do it in any way you prefer. You can experiment with other things, adding more lines or less. I like it how it looks right now, so I will keep drawing them like this. With the cardboard placed behind the page, I cut out the Dutch door with an X-Acto knife carefully, and I used my tiny scissors to finish it off. At the bottom of the mountains I filled in the blank space with black ink because it ties in well with the black top part. I placed a little sheet of paper in between the Dutch door as we move on to the next page, just making sure nothing bleeds into each other. For this page I will have the April calendar, with the letters of the week written in white gel pen on craft paper, and the rest of the page will be drawn with the fine liners. Here I used a 0.2 nib to draw the mountains on top. There is nothing new that I can say or add to it, it's basically the same steps as before. Filled in triangle with additional lines, lines and lines. But what do you know, here we have a moon. On the bottom part we have more mountains upside down as a reflection of the top. I'd be crazy to try and make it look like it's an actual reflection, so it's just an illusion. Another reminder that you can get free printables of this setup and all previous monthly setups linked in the description. Blank versions are also available for purchase in my Etsy shop if you want to use them for a different month. If you end up recreating this in any way, I would love to see it. Be sure to share it on Instagram and tag me. I made the moon black because apparently the mountains were invisible and the moon was shining black light on them, making them appear. I was listening to music or some creepypasta on YouTube as I was drawing so excuse my hand going back and forth on the keyboard. I was pausing and unpausing the video as I was talking to my husband in between. What do you listen to while you're drawing or working in your journal? I love listening to horror stories. Anyway, moving on to the next spread, I'm using a 0.3 nib to write down the name of the month and the days of the week, as well as the dates. Underneath the calendar, I wrote down two lists for the month, long term on the left and short term on the right. I feel they help me plan things better throughout the month. Also, the week numbers on the left of the calendar is something that I like to use to track my goals. You might have noticed I did the same in the calendar on the previous page. What about you? Do you use week numbers or skip them? Between the calendar and the two lists, I made a sort of a banner in which I will be drawing more of the mountains. As mentioned before, you can skip through these parts because they are mostly the same steps as I did previously. They can get quite repetitive. But keep watching if you want to see the process or find it strangely satisfying to watch, just like me.
And again, did you see the difference it makes when you add the connecting lines? I love how this turned out. It's like one of those arm tattoos. Now it's time for the double dutch door. This time I prepared two cutouts of craft paper beforehand. I wanted to make two moons facing each other, like they are from two different dimensions. I used my X-Acto knife to cut them out and behind them I placed the craft paper pieces, which will function as extra space for notes. I used my white gel pen to draw some lines on them. Love how the white turns out against the brown craft paper. And then I went ahead and started drawing the mountains. On the right side moon, I used a 0.2 nib to draw them. On the left side moon, I decided to color it completely black because I wanted to draw the mountains with the white gel pen as I did in the previous spread. really love the way the white mountains look with the black background. What do you think? Do you like the left moon or the right moon better? Leave a comment and let me know. I used one of the cutout papers to stamp out the excess white ink. I didn't want it to bleed through to the moon on the other side. On the right side of the spread is the most boring part of this whole setup, which is simply a box for every week of the month. Just a place for me to write down weekly summaries or tasks planned for that week. It provides an overview before I write things down in the weekly spreads. Feel free to skip ahead to the first week of the month. For the first weekly setup for April, I kept everything fairly minimal, adding a few mini mountains here and there. On the left side, we still have a few days of March, and on the right side, April starts. I wrote down the names of the months at the top of the spread to indicate that. Before I continued, I realized I forgot to add the connecting lines in the black moon with the white mountains, so I went back to add those.
I divided the weekly spread pages into three parts and wrote down the days of the week vertically on the sides. It leaves a lot of space for me to write down things. And with that, we have come to the end of my April setup. Hang around for the flip through of the whole setup and don't forget to get yourself the free printables from the description if you like. Tag me in your recreations on Instagram and follow me there for daily uploads and more abstract art. Definitely let me know what you thought of this month's setup in the comments below. Leave a like if you enjoyed watching and if you watched through the whole thing without skipping any part, you know I love you and you are the elite. Blank printables of this month and all the previous months are available in my Etsy shop, just like my feather bookmark. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, join the lovely family and click the bell button if you want to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'll be posting weekly setups for this month as well. Thank you all for watching, I hope you have an amazing day. And until next time, keep imagining, keep creating and stay inspired. Bye darlings!